it going guys? So, uh, you know, got the motor all swapped into the Celica. It was looking really, really good. I was really happy with it. Uh, I was amazed at the power on it. Um, and uh, so what I ended up doing is it's like, okay, had a little fun with it, running like the, uh, you know, eight PSI off the wastegate spring and decided it's time to uh, start making modifications to this. So instead of doing the manual boost controller like I did with the first 3S GT that I blew, I said, uh, oh, I'm gonna do this right. So I ended up getting uh, an electronic boost controller and I'm going with uh, the Innovate one where it's like a little gauge, ended up doing a little gauge pod, you know, put that in where my old boost gauge was. One thing that was nice about this one is that not only did it do boost, it also did AFR. So I got both those readings up there and uh, it was a boost controller. So I, I ran it as a boost controller. Um, to be safe, I ended up only turning it up to I think it was like 14 PSI. Really wanted to keep it generally pretty safe for a while. Um, you know, I, I talked to the guys over at uh, Prime MR2, uh, now Prime Driven, and uh, they were just like, uh, you know, with you only have it access to 91 octane, you shouldn't turn it up past the uh, probably about 15 PSI. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna keep it even safer. I'll do 13, 14, and so had some fun with that. Uh, Really got a lot of good power out of that. Um, took it to the dyno over at Hammer Performance. I made a video about that. I'll make sure I link it somewhere around here where I uh, um, ended up putting on the dyno. I can't remember the exact number I did, uh, but it was, a, it was a pretty respectable number. It took three dyno runs for me finally to get the boost controller exactly where I wanted it. Uh, but once I got it right where I wanted it, it, it ran great. And this is all on the stock Toyota ECU. This was not, uh, um, aftermarket ECU yet or anything because uh, the stock ECU uh, from everything I read it didn't hit fuel cut till 21 PSI and I believe it had a fuel map built in it up to 18 PSI so you could essentially run 18 PSA on a stocked tuned ES ECU and be good to go so that was that was pretty exciting I, I really enjoyed that and then uh, you know from there I was like well what's what's the next thing I can do and uh, I was like well I'm gonna do some camps I'll get some cams in there. And so I ended up going with the uh, Brian Crower uh, 264 cams, put those in there. And uh, you know, you gotta make some modifications for it to work because uh, the version they sell is for the distributor based uh, 3S GTE. And I don't have the distributor based, I had the uh, uh, coil on plug. But all you had to do was take the tooth off the back of the coil on plug uh, uh, cam and take it to a machine shop, they would line it up, get it bolted in the right location, dropped right in. Uh, what was crazy, they didn't have to do any valve adjustment. Every, all the valves came in, the lash was perfect. And uh, came in, fired it right up, and the ECU knew exactly what to do with it. And it ran great. So I ran like that for a little bit. And then it's like, uh, started getting the itch, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think I want some more power. And so, uh, I said, uh, I'm gonna go standalone ECU. And I'm like, well, uh, if I'm gonna go standalone ECU, I might as well go bigger injectors. Cause now I can really start uh, doing things. And if I'm gonna go bigger injectors, I, I might as well go uh, uh, flex fuel. So ended up doing flex fuel, uh, did the uh, standalone ECU, did a mega squirt MS3 Pro Evo. And uh, for the uh, injectors, I ended up going to the 850cc injectors. All of it just dropped right in. Um, while I was in there, you know, ended up doing a, uh, um, doing a, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, valve cover seal. And then also, too, when I did the cams, uh, I ended up uh, redoing the uh, uh, head studs and head gasket just to make sure that uh, I wouldn't get any valve or get any uh, head lift. So I uh, um, ended up doing some ARP head studs there. So, you know, pretty much getting that top end built as best as it could because I knew the bottom end was good for right around 400 horsepower, and I'd never get there because the uh, uh, the axles are usually only good for three 350 horsepower, and the transmission not too much after that. So uh, it had the S54 transmission, so it was the stock you know transmission that came in the Celica, and it's in the NA version of the uh, MR2, so it wasn't the E153, which I wish I had one of those. Those things are like rated for up with like 600 horsepower, but you know, you have to do a lot of modifications to make them work in that car over there. So. Uh, you know, just uh, ended up getting all those modifications in, got the ECU in there, got the car to start, just was having a lot of problems getting it to idle, and I'm like, well, time to go find a tuner. 
talked to a couple guys at the track. They pointed me in the direction of a good temp tuner. Took it to that tuner. Uh, he ended up tuning it up, getting it going, uh, driving really well, and uh, I was pretty happy. And uh, just, just it really just made the car just great and amazing. And uh, one thing I quickly found though, uh, once I got it tuned, and once I got the car running and this new engine was uh, the tires I was rolling on was just some bull and I had to get this fixed quick because uh, it felt like the front end was just kind of ice skate just because uh, there's no traction up there. I mean the stock tires or stock wheels were a, uh, uh, what was it, a 15 by six and a half. I was running like 205s on there. And uh, they were like some 205, just regular daily driver street tires. And so there, I remember I was out uh, well, one day and of course, you know, you know, you got this car all fixed up and driving real well. And people, they hear that blow off valve and they know you got something going on. And this little Mazda 3 tries, tries to test me. Still smoked them, but man, it was scary with those tires. So I uh, ended up getting some uh, um, 17s, went well, with some 17s. Uh, did the uh, 17 by eight, ended up putting some uh, 225s on there. So 225, 45 on there. And that ended up uh, just making the car hook up. And I got some, uh, what is it, BF Goodrich Comp 2s. A lot of guys in the forums were like, that's good all round performance tire, good for the street, good for the track type of thing. And I put them on these gunmetal rims. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. And then uh, as I started getting better with the tracking, I was finally like, uh, I need some dedicated track wheels. And uh, uh, what really got me there was the fact that uh, I ran off the, the track one time and bent up my, one of my front rims. So uh, I was like, okay, well, these gunmetal rims, uh, I'll go ahead and get another pair of them for the up front and uh, I'm gonna put my track tires on them. And I ended up getting a set of uh, other rims, some white rims that I would run my, my Comp 2s on. And I ended up going with those Falcon, the Zennies uh, tires, kind of a kind of a budget performance, almost a track tire, 200 tread wear, really, really aggressive. Um, and my track times just started to drop, just like crazy, and just having fun. So uh, uh, definitely a great time with that car. Uh, those mods really, really helped. I was glad to finally have an engine that was running, and I was in love with that car. I'm still in love with that car. That car is just amazing. And uh, yeah, so I just, I just love it.